people like concrete rules, and when they're sold rules, they want to make sure that they're getting what they bought into. I always bring this up, but we saw this happen with the NFL's domestic violence policy, where you come out and hammer and say six-day minimum right. with room for less or more in yeah. the fine print, and all of a sudden you get yourself into trouble because you're not delivering on what you promised. And if it's something in a vein of something you're truly interested, like pace of play, that's a mistake. It was a first step at a time when the dysfunction is greater than I've seen it in 15 years. And the, and the relationship between the two sides is the worst it's been in 15 years. I'm going to be curious to see if during the course of the summer, if uh, the players on the field, it'll essentially be civil disobedience. Okay, the rule is six. Well, you know what? If I go to a seven time, an eight time, a nine time, what are you going to do? And I do wonder if uh, Manfred you know, is seeing the reaction to this and thinking to himself, you know what? If we were going to have all of this discord and his public complaining, and maybe that it even goes on during the course of the summer, I wish I'd just come out, okay, fine. You know what? I'll put in the pitch clock. <laughs> if we're going to have complaining either way, we might as well go in hard. The reason why there's so many mound visits now is because of the uh, fact that the runner at second base will often steal signs and relay them back to the hitter. And that's why they go out and verbal do verbal signs between the catcher and the pitcher so often. The games in 2005 were, were much, much shorter. That's at least yep. what the graphic said this morning. I, I'm not sure, you know, obviously for me and, and people that get paid to do this, that's what they're here to do. You know, I'm here, I'm here to pitch, I'm here to play baseball, but I would just simply go 2005, hey, what, did, what was in 2005 that was causing these games to be much shorter, and, and what do we have now? Is it the replay system? Is it the fact that technology, you know, is, is very advanced, so players individually, maybe, maybe rightfully so, or maybe just because we're guaranteeing everything is a fair playing field. Are we taking longer? You know, I don't know what that answer is. The whole thing they showed was maybe three or four minutes long. For that to be their big emphasis, I don't think that's it. And I just think that it does more harm than good, at least from the pitch side. For a couple years now, people have said, let's just put the best 16 teams in the playoffs, which in theory could mean 11 teams from the West and five from the East in a year. This is not that. And this is why this has a, has a fighting chance. Because honestly, think about this. For, any, for a vote to pass in the NBA, you need 20 out of 30 owners to vote for something. If you're an Eastern Conference owner, if you're even one Eastern Conference owner, why would you vote for straight 1 through 16? Adam is saying, still have eight teams from each conference make it. So you know that no team in the East would not make the playoffs, but then seed one through 16 amongst those teams. Ideally, you'd like to have your two best teams meet in the finals. That would be better for fans. We're not there yet. There's some travel things. There, there still would have to be some modifications of the schedule, but that would have a fighting chance of getting 20 of 30 votes. Welcome to the Bob France Afternoon Extravaganza on ESPN 106.5 The Ticket. I'm not one of the 30 NBA owners, but I can tell you this. It's gotten my vote. Ab-so-bleepin-lutely. Welcome to the Extravaganza right here on ESPN 106.5. The ticket we are, Toledo's sports leader. Apologies if I sound subdued today a little bit. It's only because I'm going to try to keep my voice and thus my temperature both down. Uh, thanks to Jim Cushing yesterday. Cush, appreciate you sitting in. I, no I woke problem. I up on Sunday with one of those funks that everybody is getting. Plus, what happens know. when it goes from 35 to 65? Yeah, right on. You know, you're exactly right. But, um, yeah, uh, so many people have been sick, and I've been pushing it and pushing it and f fighting it off, and uh, I succumbed to it on Sunday. It was really bad yesterday, and it's not a whole hell of a lot better today, but good enough for me to be in, and uh, I appreciate you sitting in for me yesterday. Um, I, I, I do side with what um, you just heard Brian Windhorst talking about at the end of that exceptional montage, once again put together by Cush absolutely reseed the NBA playoff teams 1-16 to 16 so that we can see what we want to see, and that is the two best teams playing at the end of the season, at the end of the playoffs, in the finals. And if that has to mean Golden State versus Houston, then it means Golden State versus Houston. And if an Eastern Conference team says, no way, that's not fair, okay, then here's your, here's your, your, uh, your option. Beat Golden State or Houston beat them in the playoffs, and then you will go to the finals just like you always have. That is a really interesting conversation, one, that we will be exploring a little bit later on in the program, in this hour, as a matter of fact. Also, more rules changes in the sports that we uh, seem to care the most about here, at least I can say that way, and that, of course, uh, would be the baseball pace of play adjustments. I'm just going to call them adjustments, and I'm not going to say much more about them because, you know, what did mom always tell you? Uh, if you don't have some, something nice to say, don't say anything at all. 
Well, that kind of belies the whole nature of sports talk radio. So <laughs> I suppose I, I suppose I have to say some things um, about individuals that I do not necessarily like in this case. But I, I'm I'm just really really disgusted and frustrated with Rob Manfred, the commissioner of Major League Baseball. I really really am. He came out. Kush, do you remember? It's been a, it's been well. He reiterated it as recently as a week ago. I I touched on it. this yesterday because this is when this announcement came out. Yeah, and and and, and it was about two. I don't know. Yeah, maybe a month ago. You know, and I lose track of time sometimes. In which you know, Manfred essentially said, "We don't need the players association to sign off on a pitch clock. If they don't like it." Tough crap. We're doing it uh, because it's the right thing to do about the pace of play. And, and the it tech- sounded like he was ready to go, and he was all fired up. And and you know, Manfred was going to make his presence felt here. And then when push comes to shove, as you just pointed out yesterday, it's like, well, we won't have a pitch clock, um, but we will limit the number of visits to the mound to six per team, which is, by the way, an extraordinarily high number of pitches to the mound for non-pitching changes. It will change no thing no thing that's nothing if you're scoring at home <laughs> no, nothing will change six trips that are non-pitching change trips how many i mean I, do you have stats on that Coach, no unfortunately i, like I don't that's on what the average number of pitching cha- or excuse me um mound conferences is in a game um with or without pitching changes because that's 12 in a game, not counting the pitching change ones. And the pitching change one, when you've got a you know a matchup manager like Terry Francona, for example, going lefty, lefty, righty, righty, and on down the line, you know those pitching changes don't count against the stats. Six, just stop out and say hi, and you know let's re- go over the signs once again, visits per per game, and that's going to change the pace of play and shorten the duration of these games. I mean, what a what an absolutely anticlimactic end yeah. to what was a very, very, you know, excitable prospect of finding a way to make the game, you know, pick the game, pick the game space up just a little bit to keep people interested a little bit more. Yeah, a couple of things on this. One, for technicality reasons, uh, uh, in addition to how you spelled out, well, I'm just going to do it anyway. Well, technically, they proposed these a year ago, and that's why a year later. He's able to just do it or not do it, regardless of what the union thinks. Just throwing that out right, there but technically. He, but, he, but he chose not to, though. Correct. Correct. And at the end of the day, if you're going to do – and I pointed this out yesterday when I was talking about this, because it came out yesterday. If you're going to do the mound visit thing, and, yes, for the record, anybody who's watched or, like myself, umpired high school baseball of any kind – that's already there. It's less than six, but that's the general principle of it. It's not going to affect much. The only time I could see this coming into play at all, because it's not just the pitching coach coming out there, counting if the catcher's going to go out to the right. mound, too. That's going to count as one. Or if the shortstop wants to come up and you know, like hand him the ball and then whisper into his ear. Do they count that as one? Uh, uh, yes. Yes, they will. Yes, they will. The only time I could really see this affecting game play is if you're in a high-scoring extra inning game, then maybe you've run out of your six because you're going back and forth. But they give you, you know, an over... extra one in the extra inning game. Right, then there's that. If you go to the extra innings, then you get an extra free one. But the thing is... So in other words, the... in a regular nine-inning game, this will have no impact whatsoever, minimal. in my estimation. I think it will be none. minimal. And even more so, if the goal is pace of play, to me, anyway, and maybe I'm maybe I'm just you know out on a limb on this one. But this is how I'm interpreting it. If the goal here is pace of play, you're doing this, but not the pitch clock thing, then it's negligible. It, it, it's kind of negligible because yeah. these well, mound visits are like 30 well, seconds or something. If you're in a situation where you're actually over that and forced to make the pitching change, well, now that's the two three minute type of you know between inning or during innings pitching right. change that we're always talking about. So for the most part, if pace of play is the goal. I feel doing this without the pitch clock, it's it's going to be negligible in terms of improving the pace of play well, thing. Yeah, I mean it's it's going to it, it literally negligible. I mean I mean to the point of nothing. They're, like that's why I said this will do nothing. This will this will do nothing about the pace of play. The other Correct. thing that they're doing, by the way, uh, is of course shortening co- commercial breaks during the regular season. Big deal. So yes. 20 seconds less of commercials. The regular breaks between innings for commercials were 225. You know television breaks. Right. Uh, now they're 205. Okay. For the nationally televised games, they go from 245 to 225, which again is just 20 seconds difference. Postseason games will still be 255 because they got to make their money. Yeah. Again, 
I'm not even concerned about the long commercial breaks, to be honest with you. That has nothing to do with the, quote, pace of play. Right. The pace of play is that period of time in which play is happening. And whether or not it's fast enough to, you know, capture and keep the interest of the casual fan in my, because that's what this is all about to me. The, the, the whole idea, of course, is to is to increase ratings, increase ticket buyers, get more butts in the seats, and, and, and convince them that it's not boring to watch a pitch thrown every 70 seconds. Um, you know, by putting that 20-second pitch barrier up, which they had considered that Manfred essentially threatened them with, saying we can do it unilaterally. Heck, as of about a month ago, I assumed they were going to do it. That's, That's right. by all so indications. And, and I was I was so excited about that because the bottom line is, if you look at a, at a regular baseball game and a pitcher who let's say it's who's not a fast worker and he's not one of the extraordinarily slow workers, right? You know, okay, you, average. You, you so know, an average. You know who those guys are? The average guy. I mean, the time that it takes between you know the ball being received by the catcher and returned to the pitcher, the time that it takes for both batter and pitcher to get themselves ready is ridiculous that is what has people yawning looking at their phones trying to find something else to do to pass the time there's nobody on and we're going to stand there and act as if each pitch is the pitch that's the you know the the full count bottom of the ninth seventh game of the world series pitch i've got to make this one just right and each hitter has to adjust every part of his body stepping out of the box in between each pitch, and it is just a drag. It is a slow, Mm -hmm. methodical, quite frankly, I don't want to use the B word, but it is a boring process that turns fans off. So limiting mound visits and shortening commercial breaks, in my estimation, is literally pointless. The idea is keep the play moving, how or the pace of play moving. I mean, how, the idea how is many to make it so that no one can between pitch number one and the inevitable ground out to second <laughs> that is coming, um, you know, in, in a given at bat. Yeah, it is. It is. It is just pointless. The hit, you know, if, and for those who don't know, too, Jim, <clears throat> the um, rule modification. First of all, there's always been a pitch clock on the books. Technically speaking, yes, that's right. It has never been enforced, but it's right. always been there. All they had to do was enforce it, and in this case. They weren't even going to enforce it to its, by the letter of the law, reading in ML, MLB rules, which I believe, I want to say is like 12 or 13 seconds, is the way that it's written in the books. And I, re- I looked it up last time around, but I, I, I'm trying to commit it to memory. But um, if there's no one on base, and thus a pitcher doesn't have to keep checking first or second or wherever it might be, and keeping a runner close, in which case, of course, there will be more time spent. But if there's no runners on base <clears throat> that would demand a pitcher's attention, the pitcher needs to uh, uh, deliver the next pitch or at least be in his windup or in his stretch uh, and in the motion. Uh, it was like 12 or 13 seconds from the time he received the ball back from the pitcher or the catcher. Now, they were going to not even go by that, and they were going to extend that to 20 seconds, which is still a long time, mm-hmm. plenty enough time for the pitchers to get ready. Provided, of course, the hitters are ready. And as we know, they've been doing that in the minor leagues. This will be the second or third season third, with that. Third or fourth. I think, I think they've been doing it for three years now. Actually, you're right. I you're think. right. This will be, be the third or fourth season, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So so the rule that they were going to put in place, again, that Rob Manfred could have done unilaterally, that baseball could have done unilaterally, uh, because of the reason that Jim just brought up, that it was proposed a year ago, uh, would have said that if the batter is not ready to receive the pitch within that 20-second period, then it is going to be an automatic strike called against him. So we're not just putting this all on the pitchers. Right. But if the batter is not ready and in the box and ready to go, the the umpire will assess a strike call. If the pitcher is not delivering within that 20-second period, then they will automatically give the batter an advantage and call a ball. That's how it's supposed to be, yes, by the rules. Which is exactly how it should be, in my estimation, because that will keep people's attention. That will keep, keep, keep eyes on the pitcher and on the batter at all times and not just this long winding period that quite frankly uh is 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 boring and i love baseball i do too so when i use the boring word there you know it hurts i don't like to say that because i like the game so much but it really really is and these games dragging out to three hours and 15 minutes long for nine inning baseball games because of the uh that pace of play that we're talking about jim it's just they, they had a chance to deal with it here and they dropped the ball yeah 
You know, oh, oh. that's exactly they're right. They the dropped the ball on this one. Visits. And oh, by the way, did you did you happen to listen to Gullick and Wingo this morning? Uh, parts of it, yeah. 